All right, let's talk about sound design. The principle behind a shepherd tone is very simple. First, you need a tone that's rising in pitch. For now, let's go with a sine wave, sweeping over two octaves. Let's add a volume envelope to it that goes from silence at both extremities to maximum volume at the average pitch. Now we're going to add a second rising tone, but we're going to stagger it so that it's always one octave apart from the first one. As you can hear, one tone is fading out as the other one is fading in. All right, let's make this into a patch. All right, so we need a sine wave. We need an LFO that looks like this. I'm gonna make it way slower. I'm gonna set it to bipolar. I'm gonna take its output and modulate the pitch. 12 semitones, so now it's going from minus 12 to plus 12 semitones. I'm gonna rename that macro LFO rate and I'm gonna assign it to the rate of the LFO so that we have a way to accelerate the patch. All right, perfect. Now we need an LFO for the volume. So I'm gonna duplicate that one. What's cool about that is that the modulation, like the macro gets duplicated too. I'm going to set it to unipolar, I'm going to take that point, drag and drag it. I'm going to hold control to snap to the grid, so that this way the peak of that LFO is synced with the zero of that LFO. And then I'm going to drop the volume, take that output and modulate to 100% and actually some gain. Perfect. I'm going to drop a bit here. But now we need the second voice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a group in the modulators. I'm going to do a bit of housekeeping and then I'm going to duplicate that group and that group. I'm going to disconnect those two modulations and I'm going to connect them to these. So 12 semitones. And now we need to stagger both voices. And the way to do so is by flipping the phase on these two LFOs. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename that one phase zero, this one phase, oops, phase 180, and same, phase zero, phase 180. And now, and actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a bit of attack and release just so it's less jarring all right it's a bit more convincing if it's really slow But the illusion is not quite seamless. That's because we only have two voices over a two octaves range. If we play three voices now over a three octaves range, each voice is still an octave away from the one above it and from the one below it. To make this into a patch, instead of a 180 degree phase shift, we need to divide 360 degree by three, which gives us a 120 degree phase shift. So I'm gonna rename that one phase 120. Same with that one, I'm gonna duplicate that one. So, I'm gonna rename that one phase 240, but we can go above 180. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it to minus 120. And then I'm gonna duplicate that one, rename it 240, disconnect the modulations, and Actually, this time, 
the modulation range is three octaves, so divided by two, that's 18 semitones. So again, I'm gonna fix the face here, and then, so now, okay, if I put, do it way slower, For four voices and the four octaves range, we need a 90 degree phase shift. For five voices, we need a 72 degree phase shift. so on and so forth. But for a more interesting sound, instead of sine waves, we can use more complex sources. You could build a synth patch around this concept, but I find it easier to quickly make cool shepherd tones by using samplers. For convenience, I am going to use the building block library I made for the sound design workshop I posted recently. I highly recommend you to check it out. Starting from sources with a rich harmonic content, I tend to stick to a two or three voices patch for two reasons. First, to keep the sound from getting too noisy. And second, because samples often don't sound that good when pitch shifted too extremely. Remember to loop the sample. Also, I like to offset the starting playback position for each sampler in kind of a staggered way. You can also experiment with adding unison to the samplers for a richer sound. Instead of using samplers, you can experiment with granular modules. There's a lot of room for experimentation with what to do with the grand playback position. You could, for example, find one sweet spot for each voice. Or you could modulate the grand playback position in different ways. Okay, two tips for you. First, you should save your patches as presets, so they can serve as kind of templates to make sounds later by just swapping the samples. And also, when dealing with several voices of granulation like that, you should assign macros to the same parameters on all generators so that you can tweak all generators at the same time. Instead of modulating the pitch of a generator, be it an oscillator, a sampler, or a granular module, you can also have a static pitch, but apply effects on top of it that create the illusion of a rising pitch. This can be done with comb filters,
In this case, I have three buses set in parallel, with an LFO controlling the volume of the bus, but you can also set all the processing in series and have the LFO controlling the dry-wet mix of the effect. You can also use resonators, or flangers. Also, your shepherd tone doesn't have to go up, it can go down in pitch. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this. I have the next part of the sound design workshop coming really soon. Stay tuned and in the meantime, keep exploring.